Hello guys, and welcome to this EC Aquatics video. In this video, I'm going to be turning this 20 gallon long aquarium into a, a paludarium for a couple of vampire crabs. Vampire crabs are semi-aquatic crabs, so they need a, an aquarium with both land and water which is what a paludarium is. And an ideal vampire crab enclosure is about 80% land and 20% water, as they will spend the majority of their time on land, with only periodic dips in the water, mostly to molt. To separate between the land and the water, we're gonna be using some filter foam pads and they're gonna be used as a barrier, uh, ensure that our land doesn't fall into the water and make everything look gross. So we're just going to place these into the aquarium about a third of the way back. There we go. As you can see, the barrier is in and I'll give you just a side profile to see. It's about a third of the way back. So the majority of the area in this tank is going to be the land area where we're going to plant. And then just a little bit of area in the front is going to be water. So we're going to now add sand into the water area of the tank. This is the sand that was in the previous iteration of this tank, which was my Apisto breeding aquarium. So we're going to add some of the sand just to create sort of a, a light coating. It doesn't need to be very deep. We're not going to be planting that many plants into the water section. <laughs> false bottom into the land area. And for this, we're gonna be using some pea gravel. And this I bought at my local Home Depot for about $5 for a, a nice big bag. And there's other stuff that you can use that is uh, made more specifically for drainage in uh, terrariums and paludariums, but pea gravel works really well and it's very cheap. So that's why I went with this. And we're gonna wanna add just a bunch of it into uh, the land area. And this is gonna sit basically uh, the entirety of the way in the water. And it's gonna prevent our soil from getting uh, super uh, mucky and muddy and, and gross and potentially killing our plants. Here we go. Our false bottom is now in. And now we can add our stone to the uh, front of the water section and we're gonna be using Siryu stone for that to hide the filter media. Also added a couple pieces of driftwood that I had just laying around uh, in order to help the crabs uh, and give them more areas to climb out of the water and onto the land. Now the next step is to add our uh, weed barrier and this is just some organic weed fabric that you can buy at any Home Depot and this is going to be the barrier that will separate the dirt and keep the dirt uh, enclosed on top of the false bottom for the land where we're gonna plant our plants. So this allows water to go in and out, but it'll keep the dirt separate and ensure that it doesn't mix into any of our other substrates. So I'm just gonna place it down and it doesn't have to be perfect right now until we fill it in with dirt. But you're gonna wanna ensure that you have plenty of overlap on all four sides. There we go. So now you can see we've got our planting area and the fabric comes up right across 
the filter filter padding and it goes up the walls as well and we're obviously going to cut this down a lot um, but after we add our dirt in now we're going to add our soil we're going to be using this uh, Zoomed Reptile soil and it is a soil that's made up of uh, peat moss soil sand and um, uh, coca plaster. and it's designed to be exposed to water and to remain nice and, and fluffy and not get waterlogged and, and uh, nasty. So we're gonna pour this in right on top of our weed barrier. Now all our soil is in, and now we need to trim off some of the, all this excess uh, fabric that we no longer need so that we can plant a lot more easily and that so it doesn't get in the way because it visually doesn't look all that great. Now that we've got all of our excess fabric removed, it's time for us to plant our terrestrial. And they are currently down here. So we've got a bunch of vein plants, we've got some moss, uh, we've got some mondo grass, and then over here, we've got a fern, and we're gonna just dot those all through this uh, area. We're also gonna add a coconut cave for our crabs to hide, and they need lots of hiding spaces uh, in order to feel safe and, and comfortable. That's why we're including all these plants, and they'll actually use these plants to climb a little bit and uh, further explore their habitat. First plant we're gonna be adding is some of these vein plants, also known as uh, Phytonia. And uh, they're a really great terrarium or paludarium plant. Uh, they don't require loads of light and they can e really e easily deal with uh, moist soil. This one's a nice colored one that we're gonna add. some of this moss. Now we're going to add some of this Hemigraphis rapanda. Now we're going to add some of this uh, Mondo grass. We're also going to plant this fern. Now that our plants are all in, I've I have some mulch here, and I'm gonna use it to cover uh, the dirt and the bit of liner that's still showing. And this will keep that dirt down and give the crabs just a little bit more substrate to uh, dig around in and, and bury themselves in, while ensuring that the dirt doesn't end up migrating over to uh, the water. <laughs> to be able to hide in and uh, sort of bury themselves when they need to molt. Now the tank should be pretty much ready to go. Now that we've added our mulch and all our terrarium plants, we're now going to add some Anubias to the uh, water section. And this is just to add some, some greenery there. And it's not gonna be a lot, just one little, uh, one Anubias Nana and a couple uh, Anubias Congensis and I'm gonna add them in between the rocks. And there's one that I've already glued to a pebble that I'm just gonna plop down uh, into the sand to see where I think that it's best to go. But just to add some greenery and allow for some more hiding places for the crabs and allow them to, to climb up out of the water. Using <laughs> Now all our new 
Anubius is in, so that will be basic. That one will be basically halfway up out of the water, out of the water, and half in. And Anubius is perfect because it can grow uh, out of the water as well, as long as there's lots of humidity, uh, which there will be. So it'll be. Uh, it's a it's a very good marginal plant to use in these types of scapes. Got that one there. Got that one there which probably will also be out of the water just a little bit. And we've got that one wedged into that gap down there. And I might move it. And none of the plants are locked down with super glue yet. I, I'll see if they float up or anything if I need to lock them down once I uh, fill the tank up, which is actually what I'm going to do uh, now. <laughs> Everything that I've read, it seems that uh, the crabs will be fine without a heater uh, in the water. Uh, the, ro the room that I have them in stays at a good 70, 72 degrees, so they should be fine without a heater uh, when I do pick them up. I've uh, added, uh, obviously, my dechlorinator in as well to ensure that this water is, is nice and dechlorinated. The water is right at the, at the base, basically, of the uh, soil, so it's, it's wet, but it's not soaking wet. Uh, so that way the plants will be able to wick up moisture into uh up with their roots but they won't uh, their roots won't drown and uh, i've added a lid because these crabs are uh, notorious escape artists and they like high humidity and from what i've read online is that's the biggest um, killer for them is um, low humidity and they effectively dry out while on land so everything I've read says that you need a lid in order to keep humidity right around 75% or so in their tanks. And uh, when I end up getting the crabs, I will be sure to, to log that as well and, and show you guys. Uh, but uh, thank you guys for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, uh, be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons. And I will see you all in the next one.